The rugby exchange program, which began in 2015, is growing from strength to strength. Hosted by the SA Rugby Legends Association in conjunction with the Princess Charlene of Monaco Foundation, it sees under 16 rugby players from Monaco play against South African teams from the VUCA rugby program. For more on this valuable sporting and cultural exchange, I'm joined from our studios in Durban by former Springbok and CEO of the SA Rugby Legends, Stefan Tablanche. Stefan welcome to the program tell us how did this um, great exchange program come about and how did Prince Sh uh, Princess Charlene get involved good evening Simon and, and thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity to tell people more about the Monaco exchange program but also about VUCA rugby and what we do at the SA rugby legends of course our very own princess Princess Charlene of Monaco is a South African she lived in Durban for a long time competed for South Africa at the Olympics and loved the sport of rugby and in fact all sports that's uh, connected to South Africa she hosts a tournament every year the Sindavo tournament uh, for under 12 boys from all over Europe and we got invited there four years ago to go in a tent and take boys from you know previously disadvantaged area from non-traditional rugby playing schools small and rural schools and, and take them uh, from South Africa to Monaco to not only play rugby but to become wonderful ambassadors for South Africa. From that we've grown and uh, we've invited them back to South Africa. The under 16s now come out here every year and play against some of the boys in our VUCA structure in the sevens tournament. You got to tell us more about the VUCA program because that is um, something that the SA Rugby Legends is all about and it's also focusing on non-traditional rugby playing uh, schools and communities. That's 100% correct. There's an absolute wealth of talent, rugby talent out there and we need to identify these young players but more importantly we need to give them an opportunity to play rugby in a structured league where they can play against their peers and get better, get structured coaching, get structured training, uh, have weekly games and, and grow because as I said earlier there's a, there's a wealth of talent. We just need to give these kids an opportunity to play. We often talk about transformation in this country. It's very topical at the moment and, and has been for a couple of years and we grow that base of rugby players so that when you look at the Springbok team one day you would not see them as as a, a black white or or Indian or whatever race they they uh, they represent but they represent South Africa and, and that's what we're trying to do because as I said more than enough talent and uh, we just need to give these players an opportunity to play rugby week in and week out Stefan, where do you get your resources and do you get any assistance from the rugby governing boards or the mother body SA Rugby? Absolutely. South African Rugby Union has seen the value in what we do and transforming the game at a grassroots level. They support us financially, but also they support us with some of their structures, some of their coaches and, and really get behind us to make sure that uh, we grow that base of players in South Africa. So we, we uh, also raise our own money through sponsors like CLC. You can see here on my, on my jacket I'm wearing, uh, you know, DSV. There, there are many guys, many donors, overseas funding. Uh, you know, we go to all ends and, and widths of the earth to go and find money to grow the talent. And uh, we put ourselves under a lot of pressure, but the reward when you see these players, you know, literally come off the street, then play in our structures and, and, and then even make on, go on to, to represent uh, teams at the Craven Week. I mean, that's really rewarding and that's uh, the reason we uh, pass on our passion that, uh, that we have, still have for rugby. And the SA Rugby Legends do certainly do that. Tell us about who, who are the, the, the name players that, that uh, people recognize that get involved, I mean, yourself included. Uh, we <laughs> we uh, bring them all in. We uh, use them from time to time. They give us their time. They coach. You know, we go on tours. We often get a big request from overseas countries to come and start the game there for them to to grow and and just to you know to come and and, and play exhibition games. We get them from clubs in South Africa. I mean, if we have enough players, we could literally do something every weekend, every week uh, in South Africa because there's a huge hunger and a need for clubs, for schools, uh, for all rugby playing. Uh, 
um, facilities in this country that that we can that we can uh, make the game better, grow the game, and you know from from the John Smith, the Kone Kriges, Akona Nungani, uh, John Mamecha, Mac Messina, Jonathan Makwena, you name them, they're always there for us and they always help us. And and with their help and with their passion, we grow the game at grassroots level. So Stefan, what were some of the highlights uh, from this year's uh, exchange with uh, the Monaco under 16s? What stands out for you? The one thing that stood out for me this year, and it's the first time we, we've seen it, uh, the Monaco boys brought over 16 of them to play in the seven tournaments and to give some of their boys an opportunity, they mix by their own accord and by their own you know, desire, they mix the teams. And to see a, a, a young boy from France who only speaks French play you know, with a, with a Corsa boy from Kailicha, they swap jerseys, they play in the same team, one speak English, Afrikaans, uh, Corsa, one speak French, and, and somehow they find a way to communicate off the field and on the field, more importantly. When they, when they walk off, they shake hands, uh, you know, arms around one another, and that's, and that's a success for us immediately, because it shows that even though you compete hard on the field, you know, when you, when you put on that jersey, but when you get off the field, you're mates and hopefully you're friends for life. So Stefan, it's all very, very positive. Tell us a couple of the other projects that the SA Rugby Legends are currently involved in and what, what are you looking at for the rest of the year? Yeah, we've been we've been very busy. We uh, we've had a great start to the year with our VUCA program. You know, we're now active in, in all 14 provinces. And, and thank you very much for all the rugby unions, all 14 rugby unions all over South Africa, helping us to establish and to give these boys an opportunity to play rugby. So that's been our focus for the start of the year. But we're now building up. Uh, we just finished Legends Cup in Cape Town. We're now building up to our national tournament, the carfine.co.za Ikawi Week, which takes place at the Bill Jardine Stadium in the first week of October, where all 14 provinces will bring their under-15 teams uh, from, as I said, non-traditional rugby playing schools, small and rural schools to compete against one another. So that's what we're building to at the moment and that's where all our time and effort will go in the next couple of months to make sure like, like the Craven Week, we present a wonderful week for these young boys to play against the best in South Africa. Absolutely. Stefan Tablanche, uh, CEO of the SA Rugby Legends Association, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.